Oh. There are so many educational videos on YouTube, and if you're watching this one, then we are kindred spirits. Hiya, it's good to see all your smiling faces again, and I was surprised at how much attention my last video on should you buy Bible software received. So this week, I want to try and answer the question, how much money should you spend on Bible software, and what should you be looking for at those different price points? I'm not going to answer the question of whether to get Accordance, Logos, or Olive Tree in this video. All three are awesome, and we'll cover the differences between them in another video. But given the vast range of options within each of these software companies, let's look at the options you have and how much you might want to consider spending, no matter which package you go with. First, I need to define three terms here that will hopefully avoid confusion as we go through this video. When I speak about software or software packages, I'm talking about one of the three companies, Accordance, Logos, or Olive Tree. By a library or collection, I'm talking about a collection that that company has bundled together at a certain price point. This is perhaps the most common point of entry for most people when they're buying a software package. A module, resource, or a book is a single item that you can add to that software collection. So for example, a Bible translation, a new dictionary that you want to add, or a particular atlas that you might want to get. Here's how I hope to tackle this in this video. I'm going to look at three questions, and after that, I'm going to give you three suggestions at the end of this video. So be sure to stick around till then. My name is David Paris, and I've taught at seminaries around the world for the past 20 to 30 years. And in particular, I have used Bible software to teach Greek and helped a lot of students decide if and how much money to spend on a Bible software package. And on all this time, I have never had one get back to me and say, that was a colossal waste of my money. The first question you need to answer is, who are you? Are you just interested in studying the Bible, a lay person, involved in ministry? Are you a student at a seminary, Bible college, or university? Are you a scholar or perhaps a counselor? In each of these three software packages, you can tailor how you build your library within it to fit the needs that you have and what you do. Once you know who you are, and that can be kind of tricky sometimes, you want to make sure that the collection that you're considering contains the resources that you need study Bible, dictionaries, single versus multi-volume commentary, lexicons, grammars, diagrams, maps, interactive maps. Also consider your denominational background, Catholic, Protestant, Anglican, liturgical, free church, Pentecostal, whatever. What denominational background are you? Because sometimes the different packages will have collections to suit your particular background. So, as you're looking at the different libraries or collections offered by the different companies, look for collections that are tailored for who you are and what you do. Second question. What is your budget? Obviously, you get more the more you spend. However, you can't get so many resources that it becomes overwhelming, and this can happen very quickly. What I recommend is coming up with an initial idea of what you would like to spend, then add 50 to $100 to that number. The relationship between what you spend and the resources you get is very real. Let me illustrate. Now the blue line or the price they charge is fairly fixed. You can find sales, but let's just consider these prices fairly fixed for this illustration. The more you pay, the larger the library or collection of resources that you will get. But you will also get more recently published books or more technical resources. The green line is where your needs come in. And this can fluctuate a lot. If you just want a basic library or resources for a quick reference, then an introductory or starter library will save you best. On my phone, I have a very basic collection from Olive Tree Software. Just a few Bibles, Greek New Testaments, and a lexicon. I want to get in and out fast and furious. I don't want to have to sort through a lot of different modules and books when I'm looking up something on my phone. But you can customize any of these three packages of software to suit your needs. Of course, 
If you have no budget for even a basic starter package, then you can always download one of the free Bible software packages. If you're a seminary student, then your needs are going to be very different, especially if you're studying the original languages. You're going to be looking for collections that focus on the original languages and current editions of the Greek and Hebrew text, a good grammar or lexicon of those languages, for example, and maybe grammatical diagramming or syntax diagramming, depending on what your school or your professor uses. Also, your decision is going to be fairly restrained. Fuller, for example, uses accordance, so you're going to have to buy that software package. Check what your school uses and go with that company. If you're in a ministerial position, then you need to consider what you need to do your job. Do you need a couple of good study Bibles, some one or two volume commentary to answer questions someone might have? Or do you need a couple large commentary collections if, for example, you preach or teach on a regular basis? Here's the thing that I find. As my budget increases, I find some features or modules at that higher price point that suddenly I just cannot live without. I'm too tempted to spend more than I really need to all too often. And spending more may not get you what you need. I need good academic and original language resources primarily. So getting a cheaper collection for them and then tagging on some academic resources or an academic upgrade might be much more useful and will save me a lot of money. All of these things have taken me years to figure out and you get the fast track to all that information. Lucky you. Yeah, I guess so. You wouldn't go into a bookstore and say to the clerk, I want to buy all the books on this aisle. No, you'd peruse your way through the store, gently sipping on your cup of coffee, pull down the books that you want, gently look through them, check them out, and then buy just those. Consider that as a metaphor for how you build up your software library as well. I cannot emphasize how important it is to take the time and work through these questions, because once you plop down some serious denarii, you're going to be sort of wed to that software package for a long time. I've been using a coin since the mid 90s, and it's going to be hard for me to change from using that as my primary piece of software. Third question, what do you get at the different price points? This is where you need to do your homework and carefully consider what they are bundling together at a particular price point. And the options are very diverse, too diverse for me to cover them all. But here are a few general rules of thumb for you to use. At the budget level, say trial or free up to $100, you should look for a good modern translation, ESV, NET, NRSV, NIV, and if you can, look to see if they include a study Bible, say the Net Bible with Notes or the ESV Study Bible. Also look for a recent one volume Bible dictionary, one or two volume commentary on the entire Bible, and maybe a basic atlas. Now each company throws in an assortment of free resources at that starter level, but these are the most valuable resources that I've found at the basic level. Once you move beyond this point, the software companies really begin to diverge from one another in what they offer. Olive Tree takes a very module by module approach. They have a few basic libraries for you to start with, but their business model, I think, is really based around purchasing individual resources that you want. For example, on Olive Tree, we can build out a good basic study collection for not very much. They have the ESB Study Bible for $39, IVP or InterVarsity Bible Background Commentary is an excellent resource, and you can get the Bible Knowledge Commentary also for around $70. For a dictionary, I would recommend the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, a four or five volume set, and get the 1990 edition. You can get this for around $100. You can add an atlas of your choice for around $30, all told, you're going to have a pretty solid base library for around $230. The advantage to this approach is that you end up with a resource that you have selected for yourself. No fluff or resources that you don't want or won't use. 
Accordance takes sort of a middle of the road approach between individual modules and collections. They have an extensive list of collections that you can buy as sort of a base package. And then after that, I would recommend building your library on a resource by resource approach. At the $100 mark, you can get their English starter collection that has a great collection of resources that form the basis for building your digital library. If you're studying Greek or Hebrew then, moving up to the 230 to maybe the $450 level gets you a good solid library to build your studies on. And you can always add to these resources as time goes by. Of the three, Logos takes the most collection type approach. However, like the others, you can always add individual modules once you have your core collection. So you can purchase their most basic collection for $50, which will give you access to their search and other features of the software, and it'll contain some basic Bibles and some public domain resources. Logos has a really nice Get Package Recommendations feature. It's an interactive sort of multiple choice guide that will point you to three collections that they think best fit your needs and goals. One of the things to keep in mind with Logos that's different then is not only do you decide which library or collections that you're interested in, but as their software increases in price, so do the search and other features within that software. What I recommend to my seminary students is to figure on somewhere between four to six hundred dollars, especially if they're taking Greek or Hebrew. This should get you a good critical Greek New Testament text and Old Testament Hebrew Bible. You should also have several good dictionaries within it and a couple commentaries, maybe a two or five volume commentary set. A couple atlases of the Bible lands and a couple other nice resources. Now realize that both Logos and Accordance are going to pack their collections at this price point with a ton of public domain books and resources. This is where you need to do your homework. Sometimes they're going to include those dates for you. So for example, here on Logos site, they have the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, but this edition is the 1915 edition. It's public domain. If you go to the next volume here, it's the same title, International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, but it gives you a clue. It's revised. And this was published between 1975 and 1995. The problem is, is that sometimes they're going to lift the copyright date of, say, 2006. But that's when it was digitized. Take the name of the work and the author's name and then Google it. Let's go back to last week's example of Matthew Henry's commentary. Oftentimes you're going to see this within the different software packages. But the copyright dates they have listed, for example, in this one is 1994 and 2001. Well, the 1994 is when Hendrickson republished the series here. If you Google Matthew Henry's commentary, you'll see that it was written between 1704 and 1710. If the collection you're looking at only contains Matthew Henry's commentary as the included commentary, you might want to look at a different collection to start or maybe purchase a commentary set to add on to that collection. Realize that each company will have different collections at the different price points, but this will give you some ballpark ideas. If you're involved in ministry, pastoring, counseling, or parachurch work, I would look at a collection up from the basic level, perhaps the third or fourth level up in their price scheme. This is going to give you more resources that you can use in your work. I promised you at the beginning that I'd give you three suggestions to help you in your choice. Number one, what I recommend in four out of five dentist cases is to purchase a base package with the resources that you think you might need or want. You can always add to that library as you go, but all too often I know people who purchase an expensive level from one of these software packages and then realize that there are a ton of books that they don't know who wrote them, what their purpose is, or even if they are useful or not. Remember, it is easier to under-purchase your starter library, and then you can add modules and references to that software in the future with all three of them. However, if you over-purchase a more expensive collection, you really can't downgrade in the future. So let's say you purchase a module from them and found out that it really doesn't suit your needs. 
and you're suffering from a serious case of buyer's remorse. Well, all three offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so hopefully that will help resolve some of your anxiety here. But let's be honest, we've all been there, and it's not a happy place. Suggestion number two, get on their email list. I know they're going to fill your inbox with all sorts of spam and all other sorts of information, and then they're going to sell all your personal information for someone who's breeding labradoodles in Mongolia. There's a good reason to get on their email list. All three companies have regular and frequent special sales and deals, and some of these are outrageous. So sign up for their email list and get inundated with their newsletter. This is perhaps the best deal I can give you for building up your library with some smoking deal. Suggestion number three, talk to them. Contrary to popular urban legends, they have done a great job at hiring staff who are friendly and helpful. All three have consultants that can talk to you about which collection might be best for you. My students have told me about many instances where the sales rep pointed them to a discount or a special deal that really reduced the price that they were expecting to pay. I cannot recommend enough how helpful their sales teams are. They're good. They will have you selling your firstborn child so you can afford the highest tier library collection before you even realize it. That's how good they are. These software packages are powerful, extensive, and expensive. So make use of their consultant. In the next video, I hope to show you some of the differences between the three different packages. Maybe a video also on the wealth of biblical study resources that we have today. Sort of two show and tell type videos. God, I loved that in kindergarten. <laughs>